mode is very simple if we have any value repeated See here, 1, 2, 3, 3 repeated again, 6 repeated again. So here we got two modes basically in this given data set. 3 repeated twice, 6 repeated twice. Got it. So it's absolutely fine. So we can easily find the mode if it is a single data set. What if it is a group data set? For example, I have a 21. 25 age group and then I have a 26 to 30 age group and then I have a 31 to 35 age group so how can we find the mode in these kind of groups this is purely absolutely estimation basically we have to assess and we have to identify that where exactly mode is you know existed in the given groups got it so see that In this scenario, sorry, all right, guys. So in this scenario, let's see how we can calculate. We already went through calculating uh, no, median for group data, average for group data, and we know about weighted average. In average itself, we discussed around more than four to five various averages, right? So here, the same data, again, I'm taking the races, athletes who are participating in the race. So, we have various races here. I mean, athletes who reached the target within the 51 second to 55 second between. We have two people, and then who reached no target within 56 to 60 seconds around seven people. The frequency is nothing but a people. These are observations. The seconds are observations. This is a frequency. Got it. And 61 to 65, we got eight. 67 to 70, we got four people then we can easily find the model group, the group with the highest frequency. So the group with the highest frequency, which is 61 to 65. The, the, here, we, we, it is kind of just assessing something. So we're not sure about it, whether it can be, mode can be there or not be there. Got it. But since it's highest, this one, Since we have highest frequency here, we are assuming that maybe a model existed here in this group, within this group, 61 to 65. So, but the actual mode in, may not even be in the, that group or there may be more than one mode without the raw data we don't know really, right? But here, I can show you a formula using which we can really find it. Let's see that. This is the formula. Just remember here, L, F, M, M minus 1, W is a width, and let's see the definition. L is nothing but 60.5. L is the lower class boundary of the model group, lower class. L is a lower class in sense. According to us, we are assuming that mode may be available, may, may be existed in this group. So 56 to 60, I mean, we are not clear about what happened to 60.1 to 60.9. 60.9, got it, 60.10 is nothing but 61. So from 60 to 61, we have again values. But here, overall, we are calculating the seconds. That's why we are not taking off this values but we call it lower bound values 60 point zero is nothing but we call it lower class boundary of the model group so because we are assuming this one is a model group got it so now 
what is f minus 1 is the frequency of the group before the model group model group is nothing but this one we have 8 frequency the value frequency of the before model group is going to be 7 and then f plus 1 is the frequency of the group after the model group and the width is 5 so using this one we can exactly say that if you use this formula guys we can use this formula again in the or language and python so i again repeat this here just grab it and understand actually what is mode how we can calculate the mode when we have a group of data so that's that's all at this stage okay so when we have a group of data we use this this is lower class boundary and this is actual or frequency group and model frequency this is before group and model frequency this is after group model frequency this is a width width is nothing but 51 between 55 what is the width size is around 4 got it sorry 5 51 52 53 54 55 so we size is of 5 so that is the width and this is model group and the before model group is frequency 7 after model group of frequency is 4 got it so now so here we got the example you grow 50 baby you know carrots using sp special soil you dig them up and measure their lengths and group the result it's a length of the carrot which we grew so length of carrot here is 150 to 154 uh, mm is around 5 frequency i mean we have a carrots which is length around uh, 150 to 154 mm we have around 5 carrots this is 2 6 8 9 and 11 6 3 so how can we calculate a model for so all the group data for estimated mean so usually in single data set we used to add all the values in single data set for example if you have a this data set we used to add all the values for the mean and divided by 4 because we have four values that's how we get the mean right here the grouped mean is something we have to find the midpoint already we discussed about it so when we find the grouped values we have to find a midpoint midpoint is nothing but 150 plus 154 150 plus 154 divided by 2 because we have a two values in the group then you will get the 152 and the frequency is 5 and f is nothing but the frequency x is nothing but the midpoint f into x then if you multiply 152 into 5 then you get the 600 760 so if you add 760 you get the total this and divided by 50 then you will get 170 this is how we calculate the mean for the group of data and now let us compare mean median and mode yes this is very important when we design actually charts views either it is a bar chart or any chart by just seeing it we have to say that how data is distributed within the given data set in a perfectly symmetrical distribution such as the normal distribution we call it normal distribution normal trend line normal regression we discuss about them it's coming sessions here just understand the symmetrical distribution i mean data is equally distributed within the given data set equally distributed means we were discussed already about outliers outliers when you find outliers then you can't understand data very well because you have outliers over there it misleads you understanding the data but here symmetrically distribution is nothing but data is perfect we need the given data set it distributed equally along the all the sides got it so and then 
asymmetrically or skewed distribution. So let's see now the difference between the skewed distribution, what is mean by skewed and astronomical you know, distribution. Understanding it very important. Let's see. When I draw a bar chart or any chart, any line chart, especially especially for bar chart and line chart, we find the symmetric data, you know, skewed data. Symmetric is nothing but this. So if you see, we have a data from 40 to 65. 40 to 65. Here we got a 0. From 0, the left side we got 40 to 55. And here, again 55 to 65, 65. Depends upon the length. So some length here. Got it. So if you see, all these bars are equally distributed in the given view. All these bars are equally distributed. And coming to the here, right skewed data, if you notice, data is extremely more left side. And going forward, it's, you know, constantly, you know, getting down. This is called right skewed data. Skewness is nothing but this, you know, this downness is called skewness. So skewness, if it is a positive, then you got outliers and more positive values. Got it. Left side, left side. And if it is right skewed, you got low values, right side, and this is a left skewed data. So you have values, right side. Skewness is left side. And then you will understand more about the skew when so we went through about various data sets means and all right so let's say example here I'm taking two and then four and then five then six and then again some nine number and then two and four let us assume this is a data set or else for your understanding guys to make it very simple I'm just taking one two three four four values for your understanding so here we have one two three let us take the another value five the median is going to be five three median is nothing but median or average mean everything is going to be fixed here it is a three got it so what we call it symmetrical data distributed equally within the given data set because we have data in sequential order sequentially it is growing one two three four five so i got mean here median here and everything is three mean median so whatever you average and everything is three if you see that in any data set so far we discussed in descriptive analytics we will be having more median mean median is the middle value of any of the data set and mean is if you calculate the data set the mean is going to be after the mean after the median this is the mean and the mode is going to be before the median if you find the data like this then it's skewed right side skewed right it's a skewed right got it and if you find this is called positive skewed because you got all the values here itself the rest of values are there got it this is a negatively skewed the exact use of the negatively skewed or positively skewed is when i took a data and when i draw this kind of bar chart i will come to know that more values are left side of the data set got it see here median before median i got only one value got it before mean i got only two values the most of the values are right side here this is called positively skewed most of the values
most of the values are right side we have four values here this is called skewed right means data distribution can be understand by just watching a view we can say that most of most of the values in the positive skewed most of the values spread it across the left side and the right side we got the low values and here negatively skewed most of the values are spread across the right side in the left side we have a low values got it the mean median mode and if you see the symmetric the perfect symmetrical skew the perfect symmetrical skew is going to be here you will see mean median mode everything is existed here got it so for example this data set so that's how we can understand any given data set by just seeing this graph we can assume that the data how it is distributed in the taken data set got it if we got this kind of skewness then it is a symmetrical skewed perfect skew basically it's a zero the skewness is zero if you get minus then it is a negatively skewed when right side data you will find the low if it is a positively skewed you will find the left side got it so this is how we need to understand the charts so here we just interpreted we just understand that how to interpret the skewness in the given charts and going forward here we got the formulas 3 mean minus median divided by standard deviation we have to yet study about the standard deviation that's why you know i'm going forward we will see the standard deviation how we calculate and all then we'll come back to again this skewness so we done with that now let's talk about percentiles okay in the statistics we got different kind of percentiles we got deciles percentile fractile quantile so you must heard about percentile you must heard about percentile we have another thing that is quartile we got it quartile so what is mean by desire it's a just a definition guys don't worry about it in statistics we use this kind of terminology desire divides the distribution into 10 equal parts while percentile divides the distribution into 100 equal parts for example desire if we have a desire if we want to divide the data set by desire desire distribute the data into the 10 different parts we have one so next we can have a 1.5 sorry 1.2 then we can have 1.3 and then we can have 1.4 up to 10 this is going to be one portion and then next is going to be second two portion two three four five six seven eight ten how big your set how I mean how big it sense you might have a 1 million 10 million 1 billion values in the given data set but if i use desire concept i will divide the entire data set into the 10 equal parts got it 10 equal parts that is called desire and coming to the percentile percentile is going to be the meaning is for example let's say i have a age group of the indian citizens for example zero it started from zero 10 20 30 40 and then 90 100 110 this is max the age group so each and every value will be a percentile we can we can divide entire given data set into the 100 percentiles each and every value 100 percentile means we can divide into the 100 times each and every you know given data sets for example when i am applying the percentile to the each and every value 30 30th got 50th percentile pct we represent with pct 30 got 50th percentile so i can assign percentile to each and every value in the given data set 
so we will see practically how we will assign percentile how we will going to be you know interpret the the data using percentile see, we know that this is age group of indian citizens and 30 got the 50th percentile it means in the given age group in the given age group we have a population of citizens whose age is less than or equal to 50% of the population whose age is less than less than or equal to 30 got it so this is how we can use the percentile here and what is mean by fractal so here just we went to about desire and fractal even more flexible divides the distribution into convenient number of parts for example you may see a requirement where you notice it that something that desire is going to be divide the data set into 10 parts but still you recognize that I don't want this and fractal is going to be divided into the data into the 100 times on each into the 1% and the fractal is going to be it depends upon your requirement how you want to divide your data that depends upon your convenient if you you may find a one requirement where you may need to divide into the 20 times or 25 times or 30 times a data set so if you find that kind of requirement then we go for the fractal got it so i will explain this fractal we have a data transfer right if we talk about the real time scenarios data processing is very important in statistics we learn about machine learning where we see that how we process the data what are these various algorithms we use processing data for example you have you have a 100 gb data and you need to process the data from one place to another place that is called destination so based on the size of data your algorithm will automatically define how many you know uh, uh, times you need to divide the data so if you use this design it can be 100 gb will be 10 gb 10 gb 10 gb because design is going to be divide the data by 10 times we'll be having a 10 sets basically percentile is going to be 100 gb each time it send the 1 gb 2 gb 3 gb 4 gb so sequentially it send 100 100 times if you use the percentile and if you use the fractal now i can dynamically consider the internet speed say example if i have a 120 kb internet speed or 1 mbps 2 mbps 3 mbps up to 100 mbps for example based on internet speed then now i can make a decision and i can use the fractal technique and I can divide the data set into the 15 parts or 20 parts or 30 parts based on these external measurements. Got it. So that's where we can use the fractal technique. And coming to the now we understand about the definition of fractal, desire, percentile. And let's see. We call them measure of dispersion so we already studied measure of central tendency measure of central tendency is nothing but mode mean median and measure of dispersion is something or we can call it measure of variability what is the variability in the given data set guys these terminologies are very important because we are going to be using these terminologies entire throughout the statistics and throughout the R language and python these are common so measure of dispersion measure of variability both are same dispersion is nothing but we just want to identify the distance between each and every value in the given data set got it. got it and variable is nothing but how variable each and every value you know when we compare with each and every value in the given data set so here we got the dispersion refers to how variable how variable or spread out data values are for this reason measures of dispersions are sometimes called measures of variability or measures of spread knowing this dispersion of data can be important as knowing its central tendency so it has the importance of as much as importance that we giving 
to the measure of cent central tendency it has same it is holding same importance of you know measure of dispersion now starting with this let us see first calculating the range and interquartile range range and interquartile range what is mean by range if you take any data set any data set and how can we calculate the range of that data set simplest measure of dispersion is the range basically very simplest so if I, you identify if you want to identify that how data disp I mean dispersed or spreaded within the given data set the simplest way is calculating the range which is simply the difference between the highest and lowest values if you take any of the data set any data set so the simple measure of dispersion is first identifying the range now here you see we have 95 in the given data set 98 101 105 what is the range between this data set it's this is the minimum is 95 this value maximum is 105 this value the range is 105 minus 95 see here the range is 10 so in the given data set for example I have a different people I have a one person here and I have a this is actually group uh, the people in the group spread it across the across you know in the a deep forest so I have one person here 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 so I have a, all the distances to the target. Let us assume this is a target. Everyone should reach to this target to pick up them. They lost the way in the forest. To pick up them, we are we, we are picking up them here in this space. So through Starlight, we got the distance of each and every one. So I just want to calculate the, the range. What is the range, you know? This is lowest distance and this is the maximum distance. So if I detect from this to this, this is average time every person will take to reach the target, basically, to reach this place. Got it. Now I know that this is a maximum. 10 is the maximum gap between each and every people to the target. Got it. Now, from here, how can we make it more precise? How can we assume the things more precise? See here, we got interquartile range. A concept called IQR. We use this IQR in box plots, guys. So, and I'm 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 saying again. So don't get uh, confused and don't take it too much. Just listen the box plot, all these keywords. Just remember it. I'm going to be repeating each and everything again. So repeating in the sense, we're going to be implementing them in our language and Python. So there again, we see, we may discuss around one minute about again interquartile range and everything. And then we will see how to implement this in a given data set using R or Python. So you can raise your queries. You may get the even simple, simple doubts, maybe silly doubts, but you can raise these queries. I can see they are very serious doubts. So now interquartal range iqr we call it interquartal range we know the range is nothing but max minus min which gives the range of any given data set so interquartal range in the sense any data set if i take the again i'm taking very simple data set here to make you understand what exactly it for example, let us assume this is 100% of the data which we got. We got all the values in the given data set which is equal to 100%. From the minimum value, from the minimum value 1 to, guess, 
and another thing when you want to apply statistical functions median mean iq or interquartile range or range anything you have to sort the values in the order least to highest so that's why i got this sorted data here minimum to 25 percent of the data in the given data set is going to be q1 quartile one got it quartile one and from 25 percent data to this is 25 percent of the data zero to mean minimum to 25 percent of the data in the given data set is going to be quartile one and what is mean by quartile tool so here we got three 50 percent of this is a median this is a median three is the median 50 percent of 0 to 25 is going to be quartile 1 the rest 50 percent 2 to 3 is going to be again quartile 2 quartile 2 is going to be 25 percent to 50 percent that is quartile 2 from here to next to 25 percent we call it quartile 3 so 50 percent to 75 percent data and the rest is quartile 4 rest we don't care about rest you may have a 10 values or 15 values end of the day once you divide a set into the four equal parts so interquartile range in the sense q1 we have q2 we have q3 we have so interquartile range is nothing but iqr is equal to q3 minus q1 this is important this formula is important guys q3 minus q1 is nothing but a interquartile range so i just want to find the range between my minimum to 75 percent spreaded data got it that is called interquartile range now let's see here we have a data set again We have examples 5 8 4 4 6 3 8 so if we keep this in an order we get the first three and then 4 4 5 6 8 8 and then cut the list into the quarters 2 this is lower quartile we can call it q1 or lower quartile this is middle quarter quartile some median this is upper quartile upper quartile is nothing but a 75 percent guys so remember these values because we're going to be use them perfectly in the charts when we work with r and python language so and the result is quartile one is going to be four this value quartile two is going to be a median this value median is nothing but a 50 percent value data is spreaded 50% before 5, after 5. That's why we call it median. Quartile tool is, quartile 2 is a medial. We can call it 50th percentile. 50th percentile because median can be called 50th percent because there are 50% of the values in the given data set less than 5 or maybe equal to 5. So if I get the median always can be a 50th percentile. Got it. Now upper quartile Q3. This is up to here Q3. This is 8. Got it. So let's take this. And then now we got Q1, Q2, Q3. And let's take another data set. For example, here we got the numbers already in order. We cut the list into the quarters Q1, Q2, Q3. And here Q3 is upper quartile 7. Then we got 3. Q2 is this is 3, Q1. And the mid is we got 5 plus 6 divided by 2. 11. 11 by 2 is going to be 5.5. That is a median quarter, quarter two. So because here we got even values, 
in the first scenario we got odd values in odd values it is very easy to identify median and the quartile 3 is 7 here are, here we got the formula for q2 when we got even numbers even numbers in the sense we got around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 we got 10 values it's even if we have nine values it must be a 5 and here the interquartile range is from q1 to q3 so q3 minus q1 q3 minus q1 which gives us the interquartile range that is 7 minus 4 we get the 3 if you take this is as a given data set and if we define q1 and this is q2 and this is q3 got it that's how it works then coming to here what is the formula of the percentile so we are done with knowing the range and knowing with iqr interquartile range and these things perfectly works in the box plot remember the chart we call it box plot box plots so we will study them again we'll come back to again this interquartile range and the ra uh, range and everything when we are studying the box plot in the r and python and back to here and again coming to the percentile so here I have written an example of knowing percentage so here we got 100 i minus 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 by 2 divided by n this is percentile formula so we use this formula in again calculations this is original data set 5 1 9 3 14 Nine seven. So first thing is we need to set in an order right to calculate the percentage. To set it is in order. First will come the one, then three, and then five, and then seven. Here we got the seven, and then nine, and then again nine. We got two nines, and then fourteen. Now we need to assign the sequence to each and every value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let us submit these values, I mean substitute these values here in the given formula. 100, i is nothing but the sequence. 1, 2, 3. 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 by 2 divided by n. n is nothing but total values. Those are 7. Total values are 7. See, this is this represents the total value because we assign the sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we start calculating, I mean I just want to assign the percentile to each value in the given data set for first sequence if I calculate 100 1 minus 0 0.5 divided by 7 we got the 7.1 percentile and for the second value this 2 minus 0 0.5 7 21 percentile third got 21 percentile and the third value this 103 minus 0 0.5 divided by 7 it's got 35.7 percentile and the fourth value is nothing but a 7 fourth value 104 minus 0 0.5 divided by 7 it got the 50th percentile 50th percentile is nothing but 50th percentile is nothing but there are there are values in the given data set which are 50% of the values in the given data set which are less than or equal to 7. Got it. In the given data set, this is a given data set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 9, 14. So according to the percentile which we assign to the each and every value which gives us understanding the how data is spreaded in the given data set. So 50th, 7 got 50th percentile in its sense it senses that in the given data set we have a values which are less than or 50 or which are less than or equal to 7 more than 50 percent values so accordingly i can plan you know further things got it so this is one example of calculating the percentile effectively in the 
uh, or or python we are going to be use the same formula there and then very important and something which is a bit confused always calculating variance and standard deviation in the measure of dispersion and measure of central tendency we learned about average median measure of central tendency so we went through average is nothing but a mean and then median and then mode we applied it on ungrouped group data we seen how to calculate the mean median mode and ungrouped and grouped data ungrouped is nothing but a single set grouped is multiple sets we we done with it now we went to higher now we are seeing measure of variability or measure of dispersion data dispersion so here we just saw the range we got various ranges so we saw the quartile decile deciles and fractals and see the percentile now in the measure of dispersion very important thing is variance sd we call it standard deviation and variance population sample standard deviation population and sample so we know already the meaning of population and sample we were discussing in the first the first session right so these are very important and from here we going to be defining again cv cv is not our cv it is coefficient of variance so this is again very important from here we going to be calculate and again g score what is mean by g score and how we going to be interpret any data using g score value or uh, the variance or standard deviation or coefficients of variance these are very important in the measure of you know dispersion guys so guys uh, we start this variance sd and coefficient and g score in the tomorrow class please let me know if you are not able to understand any specific information in the today's session so we spend more time on the you know make you understand if you missed any of the you know uh, uh, things here in the session so tomorrow we'll start about the variance and standard deviation which got the formulas we need to understand in detail and i'll i have a listed out here real time scenarios where we going to be using this standard deviation and coefficients of variance for retail data and all yeah sorry any practical scenario where we are using this iqr ha huh. so we have a box plot basically let me show you uh, that example so you will understand uh, completely when uh, when we discuss about this box plot so when you have a 1 million data values in the observations in the given data set for example and you you are you are too confused about understanding let us assume that is a sales information you received 1 million sales it's not worth of sale it's around number of sales that you received 1 million so you just want to know what is the sales range within the 1 million sales so we already discussed it about outliers which is abnormal which is complete complete and predictable values and this is a box plot this is a median if we uh, represent the data using the box plot we call them whiskers these called whiskers we anyways discuss about this later 
but this is 25 percent this is a minimum to here we got the 25 percent data uh, you know uh, spreaded across and then 25 to 50 median is nothing but a 50 and median to again 25 percent is going to be 75 percent data so interquartal range is nothing but this h h it looks like h right we call it h spread this is called interquartal range so basically it helps you to understand the how data is spreaded within the given data set and for example if we have a various age group so 0 to 25 we have a 25 percent of the population in the 0 to 25 and 25 to 50 we got a 25 percent population 0 25 to 50 age and 50 to 70 age we got 25 per, per, per population between the 50 to 20, 75 percent you know in the da given data uh, in the population of the citizens that's how we can understand so i will take uh, in coming sessions i'll take the sales data as an example and we will see how we can apply this interquartal range and uh, 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 all these quartiles uh, and this box plot and everything this is one example so th that this is where we can use the interquartal range especially in terms of box plots hello yes mr khan yeah and uh, do you have any consecutive sessions or such so like you know if, in case if i miss any of the sessions is there any parallel session which has been actually been done no actually uh, uh, as of now it is eight to nine session so i'll let you know okay. weekends i'm going to be uh, uh, covering the uh, we got a new people here so for them i'm going to be repeating the session again in the weekends and i'll okay. inform you and and what time is it scheduled as such uh it's not decided uh i may need it's not decided okay. yeah it's decided okay. so i'll let you know that through email okay and if you can just share me this uh, video session that has been uh, recorded 